Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Janet Vassell. Our topic today is Facebook, and we're going to be talking about some exciting Facebook features that our guest has been delving into recently. Today's guest is Jen Phillips April of Right Words Marketing. Jen's a copywriter and marketing strategist who helps online entrepreneurs enjoy greater profits and reach more prospects so they have more fun. Welcome, Jen. Hi, thank you, Janet. Who doesn't want to have more fun? I uh, know. <laughs> it sounds so great the way you say it, too. <laughs> what? Before we get into the Facebook specifics, what can you tell me about your business a little bit more and, and what led you to start your business? Well, I've been in the online marketing world for about a decade now, and I got started many years ago. I actually created a website where I gave away dog treat recipes. And I built a list there and learned, uh, built a whole community around dogs, health, and nutrition. And that was sort of my beginning, you know, of this of this whole world because I learned a lot about how to, I mean, I learned about technology. I learned about how to write for the web. I learned about how to communicate with people I've never met, you know, via email. Um, and, you know, and, and I made that a business. So that morphed into, uh, in 2011, I started um is a freelance writer, copywriter for mostly local businesses. And since then, I've been writing blogs, web copy, sales pages, um, and, and, and other types of material online for entrepreneurs who are looking to grow their businesses. And I've also been doing a lot of social media training because that got started when someone locally that I had met at a networking event asked, would you teach classes on how to do this? So I said, of course I would. That's right. Say yes and figure it out. <laughs> and that actually is something I really love doing is, is working with people and, and, and kind of helping them get their heads around this new technology and how they could use it in their businesses. So let's get into the Facebook aspect of it. I know you're very active on Facebook and always looking into its various features. Let's look at three areas of Facebook that you've been delving into recently, as I said at the top of the show. Facebook groups, you've started your own group recently, Facebook live video, which you've been doing quite a bit of for several months now, and Facebook challenges. You've taken part in them and you've run one or are getting ready to run one. I'm not exactly sure on the timing. So let's start with Facebook groups. Tell me how did you decide on, on getting into that, and what did it take? Well, it's actually very simple to start a group. I mean, from a mechanical standpoint, I mean, you go to your profile, you create a group, and you start a group. Uh, I've been part of Facebook groups for several years, so I've watched them grow. I've, I've seen how, uh, how much value you, you, know, you can give and share and uh, how much you can connect with people by being part of these groups that have a shared theme, right? Uh, which is different from being on your business page or your profile page where you have like everyone on there um, who, not, who don't necessarily have the same interests as you. So when you create these Facebook groups, you can create a theme, an overarching theme for them, and you're creating a community. So then what kind of um, strategic thought did you go through to decide what would be the best theme and community for you and what you do? Because I assume it has benefits both for the participants and, of course, for you as a business. Right. So I've been thinking about starting a group for a long time, a couple of years, and I had been putting it off because I was making up stories about it was going to be time-consuming, getting it started, and, and all that kind of thing. Because it is. I mean, initially, you, you know, you need, you need to be in there and providing value before people are going to show up, Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so from my perspective, though, I really want another place where I can um, where I can engage with people outside of my email list. I mean, email lists are important, uh, but you know, everyone is on Facebook, or a huge chunk of everyone is on Facebook, and you know, why not? It seems silly to stay out of that. I'm already using it, you know. So create a group where I would be able to interact and engage with people who are attracted to this. And, and so my group is about marketing and business, and people can come and we can discuss marketing, business, copywriting, um, you know, and other types of, of, of tactics and strategies within that. 
Now, on your business page or your profile, I know that Facebook has changed over the years so that they really want to do a pay-to-play kind of thing. If you want to get in front of the most people, you do have to buy advertising and that sort of thing. But perhaps groups are different in the sense that it's an affinity group, in essence. People who care about a particular subject come to you and you can um, share and, and make connections without doing Facebook ads and that sort of thing. Is that true? It's absolutely true. And it's also far more engaging. I mean, mm -hmm. you're having it's more of a dialogue and a conversation, you know. Whereas advertising has its own purpose, but that's sort of much more like a traditional ad that you know you see on TV or something. Right, right. Did you set uh, a parameter about every how many days a week you're going to post, or did you set up you know six months worth of content you're going to put out, or how did you strategize that aspect of, of getting your group off the ground? So once I came, decided that I did want to do this, and it was really coming up with a, with a name for it, and uh, that, that felt like it resonated with, with me and what I wanted to achieve, and that I do not have six months of content planned in advance. I would like to, but, you know, that's kind of pie in the sky. <laughs> yes, right. And you, you, everybody wants to be kind of in in the moment as well. Right. You know, you don't want things to seem canned. Right. And I feel like there's, you know, like there's an organic process to it. So I, I, I mean, I show up in there every day. I post two or three times a day. And, you know, and then I, and I'll pop in at a different time. And it's really not very difficult to do with, you know, technology these days, uh, you know, on your you know, using your telephone, for example, your smartphone, and I can just pop in and see if there's anything that needs to be addressed. And you know, as it grows, then I'll be looking for someone else to help me administer it. But right now, I'm doing it on my own, and it's you know, it's fine because it's not a large, a large group right now. No, but since I am a member of the group, I know that it's actually growing pretty decently. I mean, you haven't had it all that long, and I see ten, twelve people joining regularly yes. so the numbers are going up pretty decently and eventually uh, having the experience of other groups it'll kind of take on a life of its own where the members if you will are engaging with each other as well so it won't be as time intensive for you other than as you say popping in and making sure that you're contributing and everyone else is contributing exactly because that's another purpose for me in starting the group was to have a place for other people to connect you know I mean I've, I've spent years building a network and I often think of, oh, I wish so and so would, knew, you know, knew so and so, and I can introduce them certainly via phone or email or, or real life on occasion. But that doesn't, it's not as quick and it's not as simple. And I just found myself over the years answering lots of the same questions from people, and it's like, you know, I could put this in a, in a place where everyone would benefit from it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Any misconceptions that you had going in that have been? Uh broken up or I guess that whole thought that you had earlier about how it's very very time consuming and will people really care and all that I think you've uh, shown those to be myths. Yeah so I, th I feel like I've jumped that hurdle and really that was a hurdle in my brain. One of the things I have found that's funny is that you'll have people who want to join and of course I go and look at their profiles because I don't want I mean I'm not going to let anyone in and you know there's a there's a process I'm thinking of. And, and there is such a thing as false profiles yes. and people who are up to no good, so you've got to kind of vet things a little. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I'll look at their profile, and if I see that they are already in like 360 groups, for example, I don't believe they're going to be able to provide a lot of value, so therefore I <laughs> yeah, just ignore that. it, you know, because they're not even going to know if they're in or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because there's, there are some people where it's a numbers game, that they have to be this many likes and this many shares and this many groups, and that's not really contributing right. anything. That's just, you know, racking up some arithmetic. Right, and I, I really want people who are going to contribute and who have, you know, going to find value in it and provide value and, you know, and we'll all grow together. And we might as well say what the name of the group is, don't you think? Although maybe it'll be zillions of people who want to get in then. <laughs> there but. you go. Um, it's called the Dream Maker Studio. And that's Dream Maker's two words. And that's uh, on Facebook, of course. Okay. Well, now let's get into another aspect of Facebook that's near and dear to your heart, particularly recently, and that's the Facebook Live video, where you're doing live streaming video. Again, how did you get into this and... and how did you choose to get involved with that as opposed to other features? Well, uh, you know, Janet, that my significant other is a video marketing person and has, you know, a lot of years, uh, two decades of Hollywood experience. And so I've been around video, exposed to it for a while now. And several years ago, I saw the statistic that said that uh, the Internet was going to 
the 70% video by 2016. Mm. And I thought that was crazy. I mean, that just simply blew my mind. You know, when I first saw this was three or four years ago. And, you know, yes, there are plenty of YouTube stars out there. But my immediate thought was, what, everyone's going to start, you know, having a really active YouTube channel? Like, that was my, you know, where yeah, my head was at the time. Yeah, me too. And, mm -hmm. and I just didn't see that as happening. But now that live streaming platforms have become so ubiquitous, like, you know, uh, Blab and, and uh, Periscope and Facebook Live now, which has got the same capabilities as Periscope, I mean, that that changes things. Now I see that as being, you know, oh, my heavens, this really is. The, the Internet is really moving this way. Mm -hmm. So then you started out how with Facebook Live yourself? I, I, I believe that you were challenged by a friend of yours to get into it, and that it wasn't that you were starting something, but you two were uh, exploring it? I started exploring it back in uh, January um, of 2016. I actually just, we were going out to lunch one afternoon, and I just grabbed my phone. I thought, well, let me just press this button. I went, hello, and I that was like, this is my first Facebook Live, and it was all probably 20 seconds or something. But I had a ton of engagement, and it was so funny. And then I start, so then I came home, and, and uh, or came back to my office a couple of days later, I did a couple more. And I was getting, I was getting, you know, a lot of uh, people were writing and they were, you know, commenting on them and, you know, getting a lot of views. And I thought, this is, this is tremendous. Mm -hmm. And so then I, my friend who was in Colorado, actually, she and I were, um, you know, messaging back and forth and she was asking me about them. And I said, yeah, I said, you should totally do this because I know her and I knew she would be good on video. And she said, oh, I'm terrified. I said, oh, you'll be great. I said, what do you, what do you say? We'll do 30 days. We'll each do 30 days in a row. And she's like, I'm absolutely terrified, so that must mean I should do it. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's how you learn. You kind of jump in. <laughs> right? and, and, you know, and, I, and I feel like that would be her reaction because I've known her for a while. So, yeah, so she did, she, she did 30 days. And she, then she kept going. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take a little break because oh. I need a little break. But she's been doing, um, and then she told me the other day she was about to do another set. She's been pretty, uh, she's been doing a lot of videos. She's a, a fitness trainer or um and so she does, uh, you know, she shows different exercises. So then who do you think uh, Facebook Live would be good for in terms of a business? What, what has been your experience with Facebook Lives that you've seen from others? You have the fitness person, you yourself do business tips and that sort of thing. Right. So I share business tips because, I mean, as a writer and a marketer, there's not a lot of visual around my business, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I share marketing tips. I share business tips. I share copywriting tips. Um, I have interviewed other people. I mean, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I went to a, uh, uh interior design studio and talked to the interior designers and have them talk about their process. And they showed um, some fabric, you know, they make these mood boards of different things that are showing kind of the fall trends and different fabrics and wallpapers they're able to get. Uh, I mean, imagine the use of that for a painter or a realtor or an interior designer. You go to your client's home and you're able to show a before and after, you know, very yeah, Any kind of visual business, yeah. yeah. So then you were training people how to use it for their business. Exactly. Ah, so there's a business avenue for you. <laughs> That's right. And I love doing that. I actually was doing that this week with a, with a preschool. I mean, they can interview their teachers, right? I mean, they, oh. they can do live stream with their teachers and have them speaking on, on, on the phone. How much technology knowledge or, or um, equipment does one need to do it well? Um, one needs virtually no technology knowledge to get started, you know, other than knowing how to press Push the button. button. <laughs> You're on. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that easy. Uh, you know, and I always say, well, think about what you want to accomplish within the video. And, you know, you want to uh, have a topic in mind, right? And so give it a good title because people sometimes forget um, the importance of a title. So, you know, give it an interesting title. There's a place to do that right on the phone. And uh, think about what you want to cover in your, in your presentation. And it doesn't have to be really long, but it could be you know just a couple of minutes. But just think about what you want to cover, and uh, and if you and if you want to keep a couple of key factors in mind, such as uh, not standing with a window behind you, because that's going to darken your face, and particularly if you have, I mean, it's, it's, it's not good on any on any skin tone. Uh, it just darkens your face, and sometimes you can't even see people's features. So you don't want to stand with the window behind you. Uh, you you know it could work to your side or something. But, you know you, you're able to 
preview it before you go live so you can have are you it. oh okay because i haven't used it yet so you are able to preview how you frame the shot right. and what the lighting is going to be before you roll right. that's good right uh, although i will say some of my early lives i did you know i realized after i'm watching the reviews or the replay, I went, oh, you know, I can see that it was cycling bent over my left shoulder. I really shouldn't see uh. it. You know? <laughs> but it's just like, you just, you know, you, you realize that after doing it. You're like, oh, I, that's Yes, you be- start to become more aware of the tree growing out of your <laughs> exactly. head and that sort of thing. Yes, <laughs> exactly. right? We video people know that well. <laughs> right. I mean, you have that so, inherent knowledge, but those of us who don't have that inherent knowledge are not thinking about it until later. That's right. So then tell me about the replay aspect. So people can join you when you are live and they can make printed comments while you're talking. Yeah. And then they can see it later as well and make printed comments. How does it work? Right. So when you go live, you are literally live, um, just like Saturday Night Live, Saturday Night Live. You know, you were live right then talking. Sometimes, initially, there may not be anyone there. But then people will see that you're, you know, you're, you're live streaming and they'll pop in. And you'll see that they're a counter. Uh, you'll see, oh, you know, you have X number of viewers. And they'll show yeah. you, it's, right now it's showing you kind of at the top above your head how many people are watching you right now. And then okay. at times, and I'm not really sure that the algorithm on Facebook here, it'll add to tell you who's viewing. And so then you can, you can say, hello, thank you so much for joining, Janet. And you, know, and you can mention people. And then they can be putting comments in, typing questions, uh, real time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did a 20-minute Q&A in the group uh, a while ago, and you know it was great because people are, you know, there's a slight delay, about 15 seconds or so, but it was, uh, but it's not that much. Man, I was going to ask about that. So you you can do it in your group, and then can you do it on your page and your profile, or are they limited? Or? No, you can do Facebook Live on your profile, you can do it on your business page, and you can do it in a group. Hmm. Once you've done it and the replay is there, what steps do you take after that to kind of promote it or to get more people perhaps to watch it? Sure, well, it lives on in your stream, so if you... You know, if you're active, if you're an active Facebook user and you use you use live, it's just going to sit just like any other post. So people are going to be able to watch the replay, and they will watch the replay over the next couple of days. And then, you know, so that's one piece of it. But immediately after you complete your live, you'll uh, get a screen asking you if you want to save the video to your camera roll. If you've done this on your phone or your iPad, and then you can say yes. And then you, so you now have the video saved to your mobile device. You can then upload it to your YouTube channel right there. Very quick and easy to do if you already have that set up. And then if you want to take that that further, you can write a quick blog post. For example, you can, you know, write what you were talking about in your video. And then you can embed your video and then have that be a blog post on your site, which has the the added advantage of hitting two different learning modalities, those who prefer to read and those who prefer to watch. Repurposing, which is what we talk about in the online world all the time, taking one good piece of content and finding multiple ways to share it, Mm -hmm. audio, video, written. Right. Great. And for many people who already have the basics established there, you can do all of that in an hour or less. Ah, so then you do your, your live for whatever amount of time it is. Your replay goes automatically into your Facebook stream. You share it to YouTube and then writing the small post and getting all that's approximately maybe an hour out of your life. Yeah. I mean, unless you need to make it for big. For most people who already have their YouTube channel set up, already have their blog set up, know how to write a blog post, all those components. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about... If someone wants to use a, a webcam or something like that, is that possible? Or yes, you can't... there is um, a tool, and I want to think it's called the Logitech. But there's a wireless cam that you can put on your on your on your computer, mm-hmm. and you can do live streaming that way too. I don't know the name of that now. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Tech- I mean, I'm sure somebody it can exists. Google it and <laughs> say, I want to do uh, Facebook Live from my web, uh, my webcam or my desktop, and right. they'll find out yes. about and it. Yes, it's on Amazon, of course, and, you know, sure. Sure. <laughs> probably not that much. You know, very, it's probably a very low price. 
So then what kind of a journey did you go on from starting out, uh, not exactly knowing if you wanted to do this, and, and what has your experience been coming now? To, I know, you know your significant other is a video person, I'm sure. You guys have talked about it extensively, but where did you come from on your journey, and where do you stand now with your love or, or um, holding your nose and doing video? <laughs> you know, it's funny because so my undergraduate degree is in journalism, um, but it was, you know, which I did have a, through the broadcast track, but then I never really pursued that professionally. And then I went and uh, had a master's degree in museum studies, and I did museum education for a long time. So I had this history background. And, you know, but I find that that's a really great basis for embracing technology because I understand where we've come from as a society and I can see where we're going. And mm-hmm. I have found that I really enjoy doing the video uh, because. I can, you know, often do it quickly, and I also have carpal tunnel, and sometimes it's just too painful to type, and I haven't figured out voice recognition programs well enough to, you know, use that. Do it that way, uh, yeah. You know, so there's a physical aspect of it, and, you know, and I do love the actual seminar training, so this is, I'm doing it virtually, of course. So then you're using Facebook Live to teach people things. Right. Wow. That's great. Which connects to then, my education background and what was that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> With the journalism and an education exactly. background, you've got this online thing uh, nailed. <laughs> <laughs> so then how would you or are you thinking of monetizing that? Or, I mean, obviously we all give helpful, useful, free information, but then how do you make that shift? Can you take Facebook Live or some other kind of video to make training that would be behind a, a paywall fact, or something? I just did that today. Yay! <laughs> yes, so I have just put together um, you, the, the Facebook Live Masterclass training, and and I uh, loaded all the videos to Vimeo, and which has a password protected wall, as you probably know, and uh, you know so that's and then I create a couple of worksheets to go with that. So that's the start of my product. I mean, I have a couple of other um, products that are training products as well, but those are but that one's particularly you know, relevant to Facebook Live. Aha, uh-huh. so then you've created a course mm-hmm. to help people be more effective with their Facebook Live tool. Oh, that's great. Okay. Let's go into, I, I guess, the third and final thing. And, and Facebook Live we could talk about forever. Groups we could talk about forever. This one maybe not so much, but challenges. Facebook is forever having people say a five-day challenge, a seven-day challenge, a 30-day challenge. You and your friend just challenged each other, but sometimes it's more formalized than that. Could you talk a bit about the benefits to a business of, of uh, putting on a challenge? Sure. Uh, I'm not sure where these challenges originated, but I've been seeing them a lot the last couple of years. And mm-hmm. essentially someone, a business owner, decides I'm going to run this five-day challenge, seven-day challenge, 21-day challenge, 30-day challenge. You know, that's usually the longest one. And they're around whatever. I think they may have kind of grown out of the weight loss space. You know, that seems like mm-hmm. that would make a natural connection. Um, but now they're, you know, around anything. You know, your 30-day blogging challenge, for example. Write a blog post every day for 30 days. I mean, yep. um, so it's just a way of creating a community and giving you that little extra oomph to, you know, actually get done what you want to get done. And the way I structure so I did just complete the Facebook Live challenge that I set up for participants in my group and, and uh, on my um, and on my email list. And that was a five day challenge. So every day I sent an email giving a tip about doing a Facebook Live. Uh, one of the questions that people ask a lot is content. So we'll talk about the kind of content you could create and, and how you might want to break it down and structure it. And so at the end of those five days, I then offered them the Facebook Live masterclass training, which is a which is a, um, a you know this paid product. Yes. Yes, and so that's a, a good way to structure it. Sometimes people are just doing it to build community mm-hmm. with their free challenge. Other times people are more strategic in the sense that here's all the juicy, great, fantastic information that you're getting for free. Now just imagine if you were part of my program or coaching or whatever it is, and we do even more together. So Right, so it all depends on kind of where you already are in your business, what kinds of resources you already have what kinds of programs you're already offering, you know, so what makes sense for you. Some people do it just to build their list, you know, and that's mm-hmm. fine too. So it's all about, you know, where you are now and what your goal is with it. So then 
What would you say, this is a kind of off the wall, but we've kind of touched on all these three areas. What would you say is your personal secret sauce, your personal uh, superpower expertise when it comes to solving client problems and working on all these things? Oh, uh, well, I think, well, I have a deep background in this, a deep knowledge of this, and I really, really love to find out the solution. So, you know, and I really listen to, you know, I listen to my clients. I mean, that sounds trite, but I mean, I really look at the, what they are trying to accomplish. And the ideal world, I, you know, if they don't already have a marketing strategy, well, then I may help them create a marketing strategy. Because, you know, I get an email frequently that basically says something along the lines of, I need to do these 17 things, and I'm overwhelmed, and I don't know what to do. Well, of course you're overwhelmed, because, you know, blogging and YouTube and podcasting and, you know, every, you know. On and on and on and social media posting and, yeah, you know, know, and infographic, (laughs) Snapchatting. That's right. Nobody's going to do 17 things and do them well. Right. And I get these emails with some some frequency. And and so, you know, I say choose one or two and then let's do that well, particularly when it comes to a social media platform. And then let's look at how we can build that into your larger marketing plan. And that takes the overwhelm away from them. They, it's a, a track to run on. Right. That's great. That's great. Could you suggest a, a tool or a tip or a resource that really is a must-have for you, something you use all the time, something you think just about anybody could get value out of? There are so many. <laughs> <laughs> there right. are so many. But lately, I've been out. Canva just released the iPhone app. And oh, yes, Canva, C A N V A. Right, mm-hmm. the graphic design program for non graphic designers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I think that's really valuable if you could. And Dropbox, I have to say, Dropbox is my go to. I use that all the time. How do you use it? Um, I use Dropbox as storage, um, both for, like, if I'm going to be traveling and I'll, you know, set up client files within Dropbox that I want to have access to while I'm, while I'm gone. Um, uh-huh. And so then no matter where you are, you can help a client with what they're doing. Oh, right, that's cool. Right. And then I also use it as a place to put photographs in, you know, and then I can download them from the Dropbox file onto my phone and then re-upload them to Instagram, for example, or to Canva and put something on it. And then Yeah, because in Canva, you could go in and put a caption or a nice title or an effect or you can do a lot with Canva right. for social posts and for other things. Exactly. So Dropbox is definitely my workhorse, and I can find things in it. <laughs> yeah. And I remember one time you said Evernote was another one of your go-tos. Is it still a, a good go-to I for you? I haven't been using it that much lately, and part of it is the organization. I don't, re- I never have successfully learned how to really, really, really get the most value out of Evernote in terms of organizing it. And I have lost stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> Never to be found. Despite <laughs> the, uh, you know, the search, the keyword search. Like, why? Oh why my God. This thing? So, um, you know, and then they're shifting their business model now. And but I've also found that I've really not been using it much the last few months. Hmm. And I have to tell the audience, Jen and I have known each other for a long, long time and go out to lunch or have coffee. We'll be chatting and then one of us will come up with, oh, that would make a good headline. Oh, that would make a good blog post. Oh, we've got to put that exactly. <laughs> so we're, we're quickly putting it in a notebook or putting it on our phone somehow. Right. So that we can... And, you know, and then Evernote is great for showing you the last thing you were in. But if you want to go back to something that you, you know, you put in like, you know, five days, you know, five weeks ago, it's hard to forget it. Especially <laughs> I'm sure techniques you know you can go online again and probably get a training tutorial well, about I had it. a book yeah. once several years ago it involved all these complicated all these lengthy YouTube videos <laughs> see and that's the other thing sometimes the tools are wonderful but just ramping up to know how to use them well takes a long time right. or they're very unwieldy to use and then you just fall off the wagon you say oh I, I don't want to spend my time doing that for the outcome that I'm getting. Right, right. So it's all, you know, and some people will, you know, love Evernote and it works very, very well for them. So it's, you know, there's so many tools out there now. You just, you know, try it and pick one and see what works for you. What three things could you suggest for a, a listener to do right after this show so that they could get better at some of these Facebook features we were talking about? How, how would you suggest they go about 
diving in? Well, if they're not already comfortable on Facebook, it starts with, with doing that. And I usually recommend going in for a few minutes every day and just sort of getting acclimated to, to, the, to the tool itself. Um, it changes frequently. And if you're not, you know, current, all, always using it, then you get there and get really lost. <laughs> and I see that happening with people. Um, but otherwise, you know, I'd say join a couple of groups that you find interesting. Um, if you haven't already done that, you can go to the search bar at the top and, and type in uh, different topics and things for sure. And you can start contributing and seeing how people are interacting there. I mean, that's, hmm. that's really, you know, useful. And always, always, always thinking of, of what your purpose is and you know, trying to think of it from the other person's perspective. Yeah, that's the strategic thinking. And, and there's there's a, a character to Facebook that's different from the character of LinkedIn or Twitter or any of the other social networks. Could you go into that a bit about it, you're using it for business, but it's it's got a certain atmosphere to it on Facebook. Right, and Facebook is vastly different. It's the, the uh, casual, the backyard barbecue, you know, versus the LinkedIn, which is the net, you know, the, the uh, professional, professional conference, business. you know, and yeah, they both, you know, have great business uh, applications. Uh, it's all in how you use it, you mm -hmm. know, so thinking of, um, so, and, and I always say to someone, if they're going to only pick one, like pick the tool you're, you're most comfortable with and just use it, I mean, mm -hmm. use it on a daily basis because you're going to get the more, the more time you put into it, the more value you get out of it. And of course, where are your customers too? That's the other consideration. You know, which ones are your clients mm -hmm. most comfortable with or using already? Because you have to fish in the right pond. Right. Because if you're in a very heavy duty corporate environment and those are your clients, they're all on LinkedIn and that's the place to reach them. Right. And then personally, maybe they're on Facebook, but they're talking about their children and a great meal they had. They're not really engaging with business information. Right. right. Because they're looking at a very different way. So it depends on your business model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to reach, you know, smaller businesses, um, entrepreneurs. Right. Solo so coaches, yeah. co Solos, consultants, well, speakers. You know, and, and large, and, um, you know, and smaller businesses, like usually 50 people or less. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's uh, that's typically, you know, and they're on Facebook. Yeah. Avidly, yeah, that's... many of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Avid when are they ever doing any work? They're always on Facebook. <laughs> I know someone someone sent me a message yesterday. She says, You're so active on Facebook. I said, Really? I don't feel like I've been here all this week. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a mutual friend who said one time, and he has a social media business, and he said, You won't be seeing me on Facebook much anymore because some clients are saying, oh, Where's my work? You're on Facebook. <laughs> well, his work was getting done, but he was still posting on Facebook with his personal, you know, but that it was perception, not reality. And so he said, I'm going to take a little bit of break personally so that they don't think that I'm goofing off because I'm not. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It is really funny, the perception the, and the way you present yourself and, and what people think is happening versus what's really happening. Right. I mean, because some people are out there posting all the time. I mean, I know a guy who's a, a um, he travels the world, you know, doing leading social media seminars, and he was going to, uh, he was going, he, he made this huge announcement right before, I think it was Thanksgiving, that he was taking two days off. <laughs> like, you won't be like, seeing You me. will not be seeing me on Facebook for the next two days. Don't, I just, I need a break. And then, but don't think anything's wrong. <laughs> but that's how often he posts, you know. I mean, I don't know how he posts two times a day, I guess. Well, and it's a good thing not to announce that you're going on vacation because your house might get broken right, into. Right, so, right. so that, I mean, that's that's something that's kind of funny because I find also that a lot of times people think they're overposting when they're posting three times a week, and I'm like, you do not understand what overposting is because that is so not you know three times a week. Yes, it's right, not, exactly. Not what would you say is a happy medium since we opened that topic? I would, would say, you, say? you know, striving for a balance. And, and it depends, too, on how you're using Facebook. I mean, because you could be posting from your business page. You could be posting for your profile. You could be posting half a dozen groups. Right. You know, huh? so if you're only posting in groups, that stuff's not going to show up on your profile. You may not be hitting the same people at all. Right, right. So that's why the, the strategy of where do you go and what do you post on each of these entities to reach the maximum number of people in the right way. In the right way, exactly. The right message with the right people at the right time. Yep. Words to live by. Digital marketing, right? <laughs> <laughs> well... 
thank you so much, Jen, for sharing all this great information about Facebook and, of course, for joining me and, and also for sharing more about your own business. How can people get in touch with you who would like to learn more about you and your services? Well, I know it would be shocking to find out, but you can find me on Facebook <laughs> <laughs> and also at my website, which is my name, jenphillipsbeagle.com. All righty. And from there, they can find out all the fascinating things that you do for your own business and to help other people. And I appreciate that. This will do it for our episode. Thank you, listeners, for giving Jen and I your time. Remember, it's always okay to like or comment or share these shows. And until next time, I'm Janet Vassell. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.